My dearly beloved in Christ, the theme for the third Sunday of Advent is joy, spiritual joy. And this is a very important topic because there are many people who look upon God as a hard taskmaster, as someone who does not want us to be joyful in this life, who sends us crosses and sufferings and trials. But he is just the opposite. He is a good and loving father who provides so many things. And if we have trials and sufferings, let us remember this is because of original sin. This was not part of God's plan. It is man's doing. The sin of Adam and Eve that you might say um, defaced or messed up God's wonderful handiwork of creation. So God is a loving father. I like the expression the French have for God is le bon Dieu, the good God. He is indeed very good and he desires our happiness. And in fact, we are able to be very happy, very joyful in this life if we do God's holy will. God desires that we achieve a great deal of happiness. But we will never be perfectly happy in this world, and that is also by design. Because if we were perfectly content and perfectly happy in this world, we wouldn't think about heaven. We wouldn't think about eternity. We would want to just stay here forever. And so the fact that this world is imperfect, that our happiness is not complete in this life, makes us long for and desire for the everlasting happiness of heaven. Now, speaking of joy, we have that in today's epistle from St. Paul to the Philippians, where he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Those also are the first words of the introit of the Mass, which gives it the name in Latin of Gaudete Sunday. But there are many, many other places in Scripture where joy is mentioned. God's desire for us to have joy. I will give you a few of them. This one is from Psalm number three. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing to thy name, O thou most high. I will rejoice in thy salvation. From Psalm 19. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we shall be exalted. Psalm 30. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. For thou hast regarded my humility, thou hast saved my soul out of distresses. From Psalm 32, for in our heart, for, for, excuse me, for in him our heart shall rejoice, and in his holy name we have trusted, etc., etc. Many, many quotations in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And we find the apostles in the New Testament encouraging the early Christians to obtain this spiritual joy. Here is the first epistle of St. John. And these things we write to you, that you may rejoice and your joy may be full. Now, how do we get that? How do we obtain this wonderful quality and an important quality that helps us to carry our crosses, to endure the sufferings and trials of this life? We obtain it by doing God's holy will and thus securing peace of conscience. Holy Job says something very interesting, a quotation from the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 4, and that is, who has resisted him and has had peace? In other words, no one can have peace of heart who resists God's holy will, who fights, you might say, against God and his will. The pagans said of the early Christians, see how they love one another. But they could just as well have said, look at how joyful they are. And they noticed that in the early Christians, and it was a good example for them. It is something that led them to want to learn about Christianity. How did they obtain this happiness that we notice in them, this joy? In the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, we read, And continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they took their meat with gladness 
and simplicity of heart. And again, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost, and so forth. And the early Christians all had this joy because they were living God-centered lives. So we can use that as a sort of examination of conscience. Do I have the joy that I ought to experience, that I can have by living a good Catholic life? And if I don't, why not? What is there in my life that makes me unhappy, that makes me lacking in this joy? As Our Lady said in the Magnificat, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. So we also should experience that joy, and we will, if we are doing God's holy will. As I was coming back from Omaha on the plane, I just observed how, you know, I've traveled for many years. It used to be you'd see a lot of people reading on the plane. Now everybody has their personal device, their iPad or their phone or whatever it is. Everybody's watching some kind of movie watching something, looking at something. And we live at a time where entertainment is, it seems, men's only concern, entertainment. So there was a man sitting next to me, and he was looking at his device, watching whatever, and I was praying my office. And I didn't know, at first he was a Catholic, we just simply greeted one another, and that was it, and I'm minding my own business, praying my office. And at one point he nudged me and said, uh, are you a Catholic priest? Yes. He said, well, I'm a Catholic, and I don't know what to do. My children don't want to go to church anymore. And he had four or five children, and he was telling me a little bit about them. They were teenagers now and not really interested in going to Mass, but the Novus Ordo. And as I was listening to him, I realized he was so far from an understanding. And in this short time we had, I thought, what can I best give him to help him? And I asked him, do you pray as a family? He said, well, we, say, we always say grace before meals, but that was about it. I said, morning or night prayers? He said, well, I used to, when my children were little, I always put them to bed and I always said night prayers with them before they went to bed. But now they're older and we don't do that anymore. And I talked to him about the family rosary. And I said, unless you pray as a family, your children will drift away completely from their faith. I've seen it so many times. If we don't pray, we begin to gradually, it's, it's never overnight. It's a gradual process of losing the love of God and the attachment to our faith. We have to pray. And that is the big problem today. He was... He totally missed the boat. He, he said uh, at the beginning, he said, my, my teenage children don't want to go to Mass because the music is bad in our church. And I could have said, all your music is bad in your church. Uh, and that was in his mind the reason why they didn't want to go. They didn't like the music in their church. But again, it is prayer, the love of God. So we also ought to remind ourselves of the necessity of persevering in a good prayer life and to ask yourself, do I have the joy, the peace of heart that God desires for me and that I should have and that I will have if I'm doing God's holy will? Let us always seek to do the holy will of God in our lives. And then, as St. Paul says, we shall rejoice again. Rejoice in the Lord always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.